So now I'm on my computer. I'm going to show you a little star chart program here that you can use to help find objects. And this particular one is uh, called Carte du Ciel, or Carte du Sol, however you want to call it. If you say it in English, it's Sky Charts. It's free. This is an older version. I like it just because I've had it for a long time. It runs good on old computers. I'm up to Windows 7 now. It gets a little buggy on 7 and it's worse on 10, but they've got newer versions. And like I say, they're all free. They've got version 3 and even version 4. So let's just imagine you're out with your new scope and you want to look at some stuff. And uh, regardless of whether you've got a computerized go-to scope or setting circles telescope, or maybe you've got a computer telescope that doesn't have any of that. No setting circles, nothing. Maybe it's a Dobsonian and you just point it around and wing it. You need to learn a little bit about the night sky either way. At least learn some of the brighter stars. And if you're going to learn to star hop, you learn quite a few more. But let's start with some simple ones. So let's say you're out and you want to look at M57, for example, and you know that it's near Vega and you've managed to ID that. It's Vega is basically the brightest star during the summertime, and it's a bright blue star. So you get on here, and you find it, and let's say you've already pointed your telescope at it, and you got it centered in your eyepiece. Now you got to set your setting circles. As you can see here, we've got two different addresses, and the only difference is one of them, they're like 20 years apart, because it's 2020 right now. And as you can see, it's moved a little bit. Since my setting circles, my RA, they're in 10 minute increments. So I'm looking at 18 hours and we can round it off to about 37, 38 minutes. That means I set it somewhere between 1830 and 1840 and maybe kind of nudge it slightly towards the 40 if I can. So you can imagine there it's an estimation. Good luck. You can get it sort of close. And the declination on your north and south, this comes out to about 39 degrees. The uh, 38 part here is in degrees, then the 48 next to it is in minutes and there's 60 minutes in a degree so they keep breaking them down into smaller increments but since i'm up to 48 i'm more than 38 and three quarters of a degree and then they even go down into seconds and tenths of a second now you know if you've got a computerized scope it can handle all that but you don't need all that for setting circles you can't even come close we'll just say it's about 39 degrees that means we're going to set the declination one in between the 38 and the 40 little hash marks on that circle and you know you get them in as close as you can because you say this is where I'm at and now let's say you want to look at M57 and if you've done a little research so you've been looking at your chart maybe been looking at this you found out where it's at maybe and it's over here in Lyra near that's Vegas deal. And we're going to bring this up, the little window. And it gives us the address. So now we move our telescope slightly. You're moving from, what was it, 18 minutes and 18 hours and 39 minutes, I think it was, or 38, something like that. You move it over to about 1855, kind of round it off. And then your declination, you go from 39 degrees down to about 33. And hopefully, this baby will pop up in the middle of your eyepiece. I'm going to center it, and one of the neat things about this program, hey, we got an eyepiece things. Now, I've, these are programmed in here. You can program them yourself. And what I've got here, this large circle, is basically my finder scope. This is 5 degrees. So this is like if you have like an 8 power, 9 power, whatever, finder scope, you'd be seeing an area or a field of view about that big. And in here, this is one degree. This is actually pretty big for a telescope eyepiece, one degree. If you, have, if, if you start looking at high power, everybody wants high power, you're not going to be near a degree. You'd be way down smaller. So this is pretty low power. So we'll get down to one degree and then a half a degree. The idea here is when you move from uh, Vega over here to M57 on your setting circles. You may luck out and get it right in the middle of that eyepiece, but the small power one, but there's a good chance that maybe you'll land over like that or over there somewhere. But if you have lower power, you've got a chance of seeing it and then centering it up. And say if maybe you missed it completely. It's not even in the one degree. If you're looking at 
what your finder scope showed you and you know that this is supposed to be in between these two you could try to center this area here so you have this line here this imaginary line in between these two stars if you center that up in your finder scope and then go back to your eyepiece it just might be in the low power one so this teaches you a little bit about star hopping too as much as your setting circle because you can learn to find the brighter stars which they'll show up they're easier to identify uh, one thing you notice when you start looking in your telescope eyepiece stars start looking all the same especially the faint ones they just look like there's stars everywhere but these bright ones are pretty obvious and you usually you know if you have an idea where you're at you can say oh that's what that is so that helps you find go from Vega to M57 let's say you've found that as long as you're there if you have setting circles you know try to fine-tune the number on them and uh, you might even if you have a go-to one when you get it centered up on M57 tell your little program there that you are now centered in it because it may not have been centered at the first place and it'll kind of help calibrate it better now let's say you want to go and see M13 nice globular cluster it's over this way in Hercules constellation so I'll zoom in on this a little and if you're not aware of it this little area here that looks kind of like a soft drink cup or something a little glass plastic cup that's called the keystone of the constellation Hercules this all here being I guess he's a warrior Hercules and then it shows you where M13 is so you could select here get the address of it and it shows it's 16 hours and 42 minutes so you would set your RA to that 1642 ish and your declinations around 36 and a half so you're going to set it 36 37 kind of just hope it's hard to you can see now it's one thing to try to go between the 36 and the 38 and set it on 37 but if you try to break it down to go to 36 and a half that's pretty tough but you can get 37 you know you get close to it so when you go over there first time maybe you'll end up like that and like I say you see you've got a chance of it and M13 is brighter than M57 and it's also considerably larger um, if you notice the little gray circle that they've got showing it it shows it to be larger and uh, if I can bring up my description here it shows its dimensions to be 23.2 minutes by 23.2 minutes which means it's going to take up a big chunk of uh, this half a degree eyepiece now when you see something like this the center of it's going to be much brighter these are, they even show it that way the center here looks brighter and then this fuzzier gray the fainter gray this is a lot dimmer looking so it may not appear as large as this depending on how much light your telescope's gathering a lot of that depends on how big your telescope is and whether it's nice and dark out and all that and then you know when you're, if you're looking at it if you've got your chart you might notice well there's a galaxy right there this is that's what this is this number six two zero seven if we bring it up here it tells you it's a galaxy and when you read your magnitude you can see it's actually very faint it says 11.6 with magnitude the bigger the number the fainter it is so the thing to remember is the low numbers like magnitude one that's like the brightest brighter stars it came in first place that's they were rated uh, by importance back in the old days when they said them like the brightest stars were the most powerful gods I guess so that's how they rated them so the larger number is actually fainter and if you notice this says you have magnitude 11.9 or 6 and then it says surface brightness 12.9 what that means 
the brightest part of this galaxy, which would basically be the center where like the core where the most stars are, is about 11.6 magnitude and the overall part of it is almost magnitude 13, which is a much fainter than magnitude 11.6. So it would, it's actually pretty tough to see. And also it shows you the dimensions there. It's 3 minutes by 1.2 minutes, which is actually similar in size to M57. I'm going to go back to M57 for a second. Remember, this was 3 by a little over 1. And we go over here to M57. And this thing is 1.4 by 1. So that galaxy, if you've already seen M57, you realize that galaxy, if you could see all of it, it's not much bigger at all than M57. It's a little longer, elongated looking, but since it's so faint, you may not see anything more than a faint looking star and maybe you'll notice it has a fuzzy look to it. If you see something weird like that in there and it's trying to figure out what it is and it just looks like a little bitty gray patch that's almost invisible and it keeps kind of coming in and out of view, there's a good chance you just found a galaxy or a nebula or something, something really faint. So that should help you with uh, using your setting circles. You kind of hop from one place to another and use your numbers and then each time you successfully go to another spot, double check your setting circles once you get it in position, you know, especially if you had problems finding it. If you get over there and you had to recenter it, if you were really close to being center, your setting circle probably didn't change hardly at all, but if you missed by quite a bit, you might have to adjust them and a lot of that's because of uh, how accurate your polar alignment is. If your telescope's a little out of a line, it's not going exactly to where you thought it was. Now let's see, as long as I'm showing you a little bit about the sky. In the summertime, this area, this has taken up a big area of sky. They have what's called the Summer Triangle. And all that is, there's three really bright stars in the summer sky that are up nice and high, kind of like later in the night when Vega's up really high. Vega's the brightest when it's bright blue. Then you have Deneb, it's also bright blue, but it's not as bright as Vega. And then over here, this other blue one is Altair. And it's also not as bright as Vega, but they're all pretty bright. Let's see. Altair is 0 0.77 so that's a little brighter than magnitude 1. Deneb is magnitude 1.25 so that means Altair is a little bit brighter than Deneb and if you also notice there's a kind of a little orangish looking star next to Altair. I guess that's Terra Z. And that's magnitude 3 almost 2.72 You'd be able to see that, you know, in the night sky, especially if it's reasonably dark. So you'd be able to see that near this, and it'd show up quite a bit if you had a... Yeah, see, you can... So that gives you an idea. You can't get both of them in your, low, in your eyepiece necessarily, but you can get both of them in your finder. So even if you have, if you have Altair centered... That helps you identify it. You see this other star, and that'll look pretty bright in the finder scope. So you'll be able to see that. And then we go back over to Vega to see how bright it was. It should be considerably brighter. See, it's magnitude 0 0.03. So it's noticeably brighter. So when you're looking at these three stars in the night sky, these are real easy ones to learn and these will help you find your way around the sky. What you do is you kind of gradually build up what you've learned if you're learning the night sky. You can learn some of the brighter stars and the constellation that they're with and then you start noticing what's in between them and what's nearby and you kind of gradually expand. 
your knowledge of the sky that way.